factory crafted house has earned its name from its craft quality. It is produced by a flexible manufacturing process not yet applied to housing in the United States. The finished product has little in common with our manufactured or prefabricated housing. In the mechanized craft process by which houses are produced in Sweden, machines replace carpenters on repetitive procedures, while computer-controlled equipment allows flexibility in design. The highly skilled factory workers are, in effect, artisans or craftsmen. Shipped as interlocking wall, floor, and roof elements, Swedish houses are assembled swiftly, on site, to high standards and exact tolerances. In essence, all production steps, from logging and lumber milling, to designing, crafting, erecting, and selling houses, are managed as one process. The efficiency of this translates into lower construction and occupancy costs. In the next few minutes, we will explore two questions. Could the cost of home construction be reduced by introducing the factory crafting process in the United States? And could this process help resolve America's worsening housing affordability crisis by producing better built, low energy consuming homes for less than the cost of ordinary housing? Let's begin by comparing common American building practices with the factory crafted building process. In most family housing, built in both Sweden and the United States, structural integrity and overall performance depend on wood framing, which forms the skeleton of the structure. Therefore, even the way trees are processed into lumber has an impact on the quality of construction. Frame houses combine three broad classes of building products. In conventional home building, these products are shipped directly to the building site for builders to cut, fit, and assemble into a house using handheld tools. A variety of different skills are involved, and most builders engage a number of subcontractors. Carpenters, sheetrock hangers, painters, plumbers, electricians, and etc. perform various construction tasks. As work progresses, building officials inspect the house several times to see if minimum building code requirements are met. After the completed house has passed all inspections and the accumulated construction rubble has been hauled away, it is ready for occupancy. Looking at conventional home building as we just have reveals a straightforward logical sequence of operational steps. However, when we analyze this process as an integrated whole, a number of problems become apparent. First, no one seems to manage the overall process, i.e. nobody has responsibility over all production steps. The builder or general contractor is responsible for construction, yet controls only operations on the building site. Even here, his control is limited by his ability to manage a number of subcontractors, all independent entrepreneurs. Second, the builder's control over the quality of building materials is limited by his ability to purchase the best for a price he can afford. The quality of these supplies fluctuates broadly with time, place, and market conditions and significantly affects both efficiency and quality of construction. Nor is the builder fully in control of the quality of labor. For one thing, he works mostly with independent subcontractors. For another, construction workers seldom have formal job training. Meanwhile, pressure is constant to hire the lowest cost labor, and the availability of skilled labor varies from place to place. Yet construction quality ultimately depends on the degree of precision achieved in dimensions, cutting angles, joints, and finishing details. All this is affected by the physical stability of the materials used. Wet lumber, for example, will dry out later inside the structure. In so doing, it will shrink and often deform, resulting in quality defects like cracks, deformed joints, and popped nails. With handheld tools working under the makeshift working conditions of a building site, precision depends on three factors. The skill of workers, the speed with which a given task is performed, and of course, the quality of raw materials. As a result, site construction quality is proportional to the amount of money spent on materials and labor. With the building industry under pressure to reduce costs, is it surprising that quality in housing has come to be considered a premium feature and affordability is often synonymous with inferior construction? 
For example, construction costs per square foot of floor space are 1, 21, and 56 percent higher for average, custom, and luxury quality houses, respectively, than the cost of economy quality construction. Organization of the process encourages non-productive expenditures. Consequently, overall productivity is low. For example, building materials are purchased in small lots and delivered to the building site in inefficient partial loads. Most building materials have been marked up several times through a distribution chain, even before construction begins. These middlemen might be necessary to make the process work, but they add no value whatever to any of the materials. As already mentioned, coordinating a number of independent subcontractors is difficult and inefficient. Each of them, after all, organizes the work to maximize his own profit. The priorities of a given construction site often conflict with those of a given subcontractor. As a result, tasks are often delayed or conflict with one another. Sometimes they may even have to be redone to fix damage done by another subcontractor. To protect themselves, subcontractors normally include a contingency or fudge factor in their billings. The general contractor or builder routinely does the same. Profits and fudge factors compound each other, and both are further compounded between subcontractors and builder. There is nothing unseemly or unethical here, but none of these expenses adds any value to a house. There are obvious resource management problems as well. Materials stored at the building site are vulnerable to pilferage and damage by vandals and the elements. On-site cutting and fitting is an inefficient use of materials because it generates mixed construction waste. The waste factor is compounded by broad quality fluctuations in building lumber and damage sustained in outdoor storage. Consequently, more material is bought than is actually needed, and waste and rubble must be removed and disposed of at some expense. Nationwide, waste removal costs now range from $500 to $2,000 per family home, rising as landfill space gets scarce. These non-productive expenses are cumulative. Finished lumber, marked up through a distribution chain, shipped in small lots, handled and worked by construction workers, is finally disposed of as waste at further expense. Repeated on-site inspections are inherently inefficient and costly as well. Scheduling them adds another wrinkle to an already complex coordination task, and delays result in added costs. Repeated trips to the building site by building officials cost money as well, indirectly reflected in taxes and fees. Finally, even when U.S.-made panelized housing or prefabricated components are used and quality levels are of concern, the savings realized are marginal. This is because, at the building site, the inherent inefficiencies of the conventional building process still prevail. Components delivered to the building site are, in effect, treated as more complex building materials. Taken together, these process deficiencies translate into higher than necessary construction costs. How much higher? A 1988 study compared the conventional building process with the factory crafted process in Sweden. Not only was the quality of factory crafted housing found to be equal to or better than conventionally built custom housing, but construction costs for the factory crafted house turned out to be more than 25% lower than for the equivalent custom quality house. What makes such savings possible? To find the answer, we must understand the factory crafted building process. Since it relies on similar raw materials, factory crafted construction begins exactly as conventional home building. Beyond this, however, the process takes a different tack. All building materials are shipped to a well-equipped automated factory, not directly to the building site. The factory produces high-quality interlocking building components. Inspections occur right in the factory as a scheduled part of quality control procedures. Instead of loose materials, virtually finished building components are delivered to the building site. The specialized trucks and shipping racks used are designed to make the job a highly efficient one-person operation. Assembly of the components and interior finishing is done on short order by a two to four man crew with or without a construction crane depending on the building system used. The crew is well trained to perform all tasks. Waste is limited to little more than protective packing materials removed from the site with the empty shipping containers. A single final inspection completes the construction process and the house is ready for occupancy. 
So far, this could be the flowchart for any reasonably well-organized factory-based housing system anywhere in the world, including the United States. But there is more to the factory-crafted system. Integrated management coordinates all production steps, constantly updating the building process. The heart of the factory crafted process is the key role played by the design department in managing the process from the tree to the finished house. This means, among other things, full control over the quality of raw materials specified to maximize process efficiency. Computer-aided design, or CAD, and computer-aided manufacturing, or CAM, have been commonplace and provide opportunities to improve marketing and aftermarket services as well. Strict standards and their uniform enforcement also play a positive role in the building process in Sweden. Without uniform standards, the integrated production system we are describing would work only if all its parts were controlled by common ownership. How else could one ensure a lumber supply to meet the needs of ever more automated factory production without either adversely affecting quality or increasing waste? Strict and uniform standards have made possible the high degree of vertical integration achieved in Sweden, at the same time encouraging free market competition between suppliers. No longer must the lumber mill be owned by the factory because any lumber mill's product meets the same specifications. The inherent economy of the factory crafted system, more than 25% construction cost savings over conventional construction, is not a consequence of mere automation, no matter how advanced. It is the result of the context within which such automation occurs, the tight, integrated management of a rationalized building process. Factory crafted home building is best characterized by ongoing innovation and change. Unlike his colleague in the conventional system, the builder of a factory-crafted house enjoys full control of the quality of building materials. The number of workers involved in the process is small. They are highly trained, stably employed, and work under optimal working conditions. As a result, quality of labor is high. There is no need to pay line supervisors, either in the factory or at the building site, another non-productive expense spared. Craft factories do not rely on mass production techniques. Instead of automating to reduce each job to a few simple movements repetitively performed by low-skilled workers, intelligent automation lets both people and machines do what each does best. Machines do heavy lifting, tedious and repetitive tasks, and precision procedures, literally building quality right into the process. The result is a highly economical process that offers virtually unlimited product design flexibility thanks to the man-machine partnership within the process. Skilled workers in a craft factory operate their equipment like a craftsman uses his tools. This is the origin of the term factory crafted. We began with two questions. It is time to answer them. Could the cost of home construction be reduced by introducing factory-crafted construction in the United States? If the Swedish efficiency can be duplicated here, yes. And there is no reason why that efficiency and the resulting cost savings could not be realized here, if the integrity of the process and its operating principles are preserved without compromise. This means, first and foremost, a commitment to eliminate non-productive expenditures from the home building process for high productivity makes the factory crafted system economical. It is impossible to detail here the various savings that result from the process, but a few examples follow. A factory crafted house is equivalent or better in quality to a custom quality house. Yet the process saves anywhere from 500 to 950 man hours of labor per house, depending on the quality level used for comparison. This represents a saving of 11,000 to over 21,000 in wages and benefits per house. Both factory and site labor are included in these numbers. However, while in conventional construction nearly all work is site labor, less than 240 site man hours are needed to ready a factory crafted house for occupancy. Of this, erecting and closing the house takes less than 40 man hours, and a crew of three